We've come a long way so far, adding a background, a rotating cannon, and cannonballs that move across the screen when the player presses a button or keyboard key. To start to close the loop on this game, we need to add a challenge. To do that, we will add enemy spaceships that fly above the cannon that can be shot down for points. We'll start by creating an array of enemy ships. They're game objects, just like the cannonballs. Their sprite and behavior will be different, but their game objects just the same. So, scroll to the top of the Game 1 class, where you've declared all of your variables, and scroll down past your declarations of previous gamepad state and previous keyboard state. On the next line, add the following. const int max enemies equals 3 const float max enemy height equals 0.1f const float min enemy height equals 0.5f const float max enemy velocity equals 5.0f const float min enemy velocity equals 1.0f random random equals new random open parenthesis close parenthesis game object open square bracket close square bracket enemies There's a lot going on here. Some you'll recognize, and some you might not. We're setting up a few constants, like the cannonballs. We have a maximum amount of enemies that can be alive at one time. Right now, that's set to 3. The four floating point values that come after are going to help us create the enemies with some randomness in their height and velocity. The random class we're instantiating just after that is for the same reason. It will generate random numbers to help us create this random behavior. Finally, we declare the array of game objects that represent our enemies, just like the cannonballs. And just like the cannonballs, we need to initialize the array. So let's go to the load content method. Select it from the method selector. Look for the code you wrote to initialize the cannonballs array. Scroll down past that code, add a new line, and add the following code. Enemies equals new game object. Open square bracket. Max enemies. Close square bracket. 4, open parenthesis, int i equals 0. i is less than max enemies. i plus plus, open curly brace, enemies, open square bracket, i close square bracket equals new game object open parenthesis content dot load 
open angle bracket, texture 2D, close angle bracket, open parenthesis, quotation, capital sprites, backslash, backslash, enemy, quotation, close parenthesis, close parenthesis, close curly brace. This is the same general code as for the cannonballs, just using different sprite. If you're wondering why we don't use a for each loop, the reason has to do with C-sharp language. When you use a for each loop, you declare a variable to be your current place in the loop. In the case of this array, it would be a game object. We might name it enemy. Notice that inside this loop, we use enemies sub i to refer to the current variable. In this loop, we assign that current variable to something. Setting the current variable is not allowed in a for each loop. It will generate an error. So, any time we have to modify the current variable by assigning it to something else, that requires using a for loop. Now, we'll write the code to move the ships across the screen. 